Here are the questions from people wanting to know what we think here on the panel. What does the panel make of the two TN oh, Tennessee lawmakers who were expelled from the state legislature? Oh, that was a big story this week. We didn't get to it. Yes, uh, they now they were protesting because there was a shooting there. They wanted, you know, I think I agree with what they were saying is we need better gun control laws. But these are legislators and they used a bullhorn inside the well of the Con the Senate of Tennessee, was it? This is state state legislature. Yeah. Um, and interrupted the proceedings, which of course, when that happened on January the 6th, in a much larger and more violent way, oh. all the people currently cheering on the two Tennessee legislators were the ones who would have been condemning and castigating what happened well, I on would. January the 6th. You're, well, you're not actually comparing. No, no, yeah, that's I'm, crazy. I, that's you, why I you said, actually did just compare. No, no, here's what I'm comparing. When you have a mob of protesters and they're going into a, a legislative chamber, whether it's at the Capitol or whether it's in Tennessee, the principle's the same. And if you don't have the same okay. principle response to both of those things, regardless of scale, no, then you're not principled. No, listen, the principle is different. They were Tennessee legislature, legislators who went into the chamber and, and admittedly broke the rules of decorum, mm. partly because they were being silenced when they wanted to talk following the rules of decorum about gun violence prevention. What happened on January 6th was a bunch of batshit crazy fuckers with guns who killed police people. Oh, Pierce, yeah. that is not the same. Oh, but Katie, Katie, I, I, like Bill, I agree with what the legislators who were doing the protesting, I agree with them about guns. Everyone knows, I think, in fact, that's why I left CNN. It's right. nice to be back, by the way, on CNN. Um, I agree with them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's it's right. A, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, the last time I was on CNN, I was talking about guns. <laughs> but thank you, Bill. That would probably get me fired all over again. Um, uh, <laughs> but I, I just think you, in the end, you've got to be consistent okay. about the way you view but that is a, a terrible, collection of But that is a terrible analogy. Well, they're not the same it's, it's thing, a, okay. but the principle is the same. Then why bring it up? It's a terrible analogy. You should, a mob of people but, going in to stop democratic proceedings but it's, but it's, is not democracy whether you're on the right or left. Okay. The principle, what, what, what I the principle would, is I don't think a mob of protesters yes, should I, go in into a legislative uh, building okay, no, and did. stop the proceedings. They okay, did. they should. I agree. With they were a mob. The two guys were a mob. No, no. all the other protesters. Oh, the other people. No, but yeah. here's the thing. These guys are legislators. What I would say to them is, look, I admire your passion. I mean, why are the young people your age are in government? I think that's good that you want to be in government and not just oblivious to it. Um, and the issue, okay, a oh, valid point. But you are in the legislature now. The legislature. Yeah. You don't need the bullhorn. That's for when you're out on the street. You have to modulate. This is, what, this is what they do on college campuses. We just stop you from talking if we disagree with a bullhorn or shouting. They have to leave that behind. Now you're inside. You're in the building. You got elected. The way to affect change is write a law, do it that way. But the, they, the bullhorn was well, I, right, I, I for think outside. You, I think you have a point. I, I think you have a point about they were in there, they had other opportunities, they can introduce a law. I also do want to say that rules of decorum are often used to silence people who do not have voices. And in this case, we're talking about two younger um, men, two black men, two people in the mind, political minority in Tennessee. And so we've seen rules of decorum be used over and over and over again in this country as an excuse to exclude people and to silence people. So okay. I think you're right though that, that, that I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, I so deeply, deeply agree with you about the January 6th and how wrong Piers is to try to equivocate I didn't those equi things. But I didn't know. So what you were doing was playing politics. I, I talked purely about a principle of a mob of people going okay. in to stop democratic let's, proceedings. Let's, it let's shouldn't stop. be happening whether it's on the left or the right. Let's stop digging. <laughs> I just love that they've been re-elected immediately and raised all this money and they're national heroes. Oops. <laughs> uh, didn't work. What do you make of Prince Harry's plan to attend his father's coronation without Margaret, Meghan Markle? God, why do we give a I don't know. damn. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. You're on CNN, Bill. I know. You swore on CNN, not me. Uh, 
how about that? Uh, what do you make of Prince Harry's? Well, I don't know why we care so much. Uh, you, you have, Look, you, you can care. You America have... has sent, America, I hate to say this, but America has sent two women into our royal family. The first was Wallace Simpson, who yes. led to an abdication. Right. And the second, <laughs> and the second is Meghan Markle. You are two for two and it's not looking great. So, frankly, <laughs> keep your women here. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> so what happened? So Prince Harry's going and she's not? He's going and all his family basically want to kill him and she's staying here because they feel the same way about her. I mean, look, they're, from my point of view, they're just a pair of little uh, royal renegade grifters who want to have their royal cake and eat it. They want to keep the titles, make hundreds of millions, trashing their family again and again and again and again. And eventually the royal family's gone, you know what? Shut up. Right. That's it. I, agree, I basically agree with you. I mean, I would, I would defend Harry only insofar as that he went to Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, I mean, he could have got out of that, as certainly the people in this country do, yeah. with that kind of standing. And he didn't. He went. He did, he, he did honorable service for his country, and he was a beloved prince. To give you some idea how far he's fallen, he is now less popular than Prince Andrew. Right. Exactly. But, but her thing about, you know, the, the royal family being racist, maybe they are. Certainly the history is. She never produced a shred of evidence well, to support that. Well, they were cold to me. They're cold to everybody. They were cold to Diana. And who was whiter than Diana? <laughs> they, they're just cold people. That's yeah, who they gonna, are. That's the, if that's, you're going to call the royal family racist like she did on Oprah Winfrey, uh, you've got to back it up with some evidence. Not a shred of evidence has either of them ever produced for any racism from the royal family. So put up or shut up and stop smearing our royal family. Okay. In my opinion. Ben, this is for you. How much do you think the failure to regulate crypto is due to lawmakers not understanding it? Well, we just said we don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, John Tester yeah, yeah, said yeah. that on camera. He's like, <laughs> no one knows what this is. Sorry. But the uh, salt, no, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We're on CNN. <laughs> sorry. Gee whiz. Can everyone uh, stop swearing on CNN? I'm please. telling you. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're going to get them rinsing. <laughs> I do think I do think it's part that they that the that the uh, legislators didn't understand it. But I went there over the summer. I went to D.C. with with the journal uh, Jacob, who's wrote, wrote the book with me, and we had meetings. Some of which I talk about in the book. Some of which I can't talk about. And the general attitude was, "You're probably right, but I'm sorry, Sam Bankman Fried has given us too much money." That's Sam right. Bankman Fried gave yes, he did. the Democrats forty million dollars. Yeah. His lieutenant gave the Republicans 23. I believe the total is somewhere around $90 million in this straw donor scheme that is alleged to have happened. They bought them up both off. And they bought them off, not necessarily in the sense that they passed bad legislation, which they could have done. There was a bill called Sam's Bill that was going you know, through the Ag Committee potentially. But they kept them from doing anything that was actually would have stopped this Ponzi scheme from collapsing and ruining hmm. tens of thousands of people's lives. If not, I mean, millions of people now don't have access to their accounts at FTX. You've been very tough on the pitch men of oh, celeb the celebrities are the celebrities are not the core problem. Of course, they're just the megaphone necessary to spread the Ponzi. But you think they shouldn't have done that? Well, of course they shouldn't have done it. I mean, they should. I mean, <laughs> you shouldn't sell unregistered and licensed securities. This is a. This is actually against the law. Um, and you also shouldn't hawk for the exchanges that are that are doing that. But uh, they're they're the. This is what happens at the end, at the end of the Ponzi life cycle. It gets as big as possible, and you need the biggest celebrities out there. I won't name names. <laughs> right. But Lindsay Lohan, obviously. Sorry. It's just, but but other right. other big celebrities to sell for you. And that's what happened. How much of this do you think, though, was an enforcement problem versus, I mean, because you, you just said they are securities. These are, you're selling unlicensed securities. Yeah. We have a Securities and Exchange Commission. Yes. Ponzi schemes have been illegal for about 100 years, give or take. Yep. What's the explanation that you have for why the SEC didn't take action? Uh, well, a couple reasons. I think one of them is that it's regulators don't have much incentive to pop a bubble and potentially get blamed for it until it's popped. Once it's popped, you come in, you clean it up, you go, oh, you shouldn't have done that. But the other, the other thing is that we're the only country in the world that I'm aware of that separates its securities regulation from its commodities regulation. We have a CFTC and an SEC. It's created a gray area. 
We need someone to oversee these agencies, in my opinion. Someone to, to basically, because they're fighting over it, and they're fighting over it. Why? In part, in terms of, in my opinion, the CFTC, in order to get the donations. Well